Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. Today, we are going to look at the total synthesis of 11O dibenzoyl tachyronin. The work we are going to look at today was published by the Wang Group in Orglet, entitled The Total Synthesis of 11O Dibenzoyl Tachyronin via Palladium Catalyzed 5 Endo Ene Ein Cyclization Enabled Trans 5 6 Ring Fusion. The compound that we will be looking at was isolated from the Illicium Tahishiroi plant. Plants from this family have been used in traditional Chinese medicine for many years for varying purposes and also used in cooking in the form of star anise. This molecule is being targeted for synthesis as it has interesting biological properties and has been shown to possess neurotrophic activity in studies where they administered it to cultured fetal rat cortical neurons at 0.1 micromolar and showed that it could promote growth of these neurons, suggesting that it has potential applications in treating neurological diseases. The molecule itself is a tetracyclic sesquiterpene featuring an uncommon allocedrine carbon skeleton. This molecule possesses seven stereocenters, which has made it the target of several total syntheses. The work that we will be looking at offers a new strategy to complete this tetracyclic structure in a highly stereocontrolled fashion with minimal use of protecting groups. So let's start with looking at the retrosynthesis. The authors sought to use a reductive radical cyclization similar to a McMurray coupling to complete the final ring of the structure. An ene-ein cyclization could be used to complete the five-membered all-carbon ring, leading back to an intermediate, the precursor of which could be obtained from oxidation state manipulations of a highly oxygenated alkyne-bearing intermediate. This alkyne could be installed through an alkylation reaction of a ketone, using an intermediate which could be derived from several oxidation steps of a previously reported bicyclic enone lactone. So now let's look at the forward reactions. The sequence started with a nucleophilic epoxidation of an enone using terbutyl hydroperoxide and DBU. The peroxy anion adds to the enone in a conjugate fashion, ultimately forming an epoxide with the expulsion of terbutanol as a byproduct. To give the target epoxide in a 40 to 1 diastereomeric ratio, the selectivity of this reaction comes from the steric hindrance of the methyl group, which blocks the bottom face of the ring, forcing the nucleophile to approach from the other face. This reaction was followed with an acetylation of the alpha position using lead tetraacetate. Both radical and ionic mechanisms have been proposed with the reaction but I have shown a possible mechanism here involving coordination of the lead to the ketone oxygen, increasing its electrophilicity and allowing deprotonation of the alpha hydrogen by the acetate. Addition of an acetate group to the alpha position together with the oxidation of the oxygen group with the simultaneous reduction of the lead salt completes the reaction to give the alpha acetylated ketone in a 20 to one DR. The selectivity of this reaction is driven by steric effects and the 1,3 diaxial repulsion that would occur if the axial position was acetylated. The next reaction was a Grignard addition using bomb chloride to install a benzyl ether group. The formation of this Grignard reagent was catalyzed using mercury chloride. Following this reaction, the acetate group was then hydrolyzed to produce an alcohol syn to the alcohol that was produced by the Grignard reaction. As with the previous reactions, the Grignard addition was stereoselective with a 20 to 1 DR. We can explain this by looking at the Newman projection and seeing that the nucleophile adds to the less hindered equatorial position. Moving forward, the hydroxyl group that was revealed by the hydrolysis of the acetate was then oxidized using IBX. A bond is formed between the secondary alcohol and the iodine center of the IBX reagent which increases its electrophilicity. This allows the abstraction of the geminal proton to form a ketone. This newly formed ketone served as an electrophile in the next reaction, which was a propargillation reaction 
using an organo-zinc compound. This is known as a Barbier reaction and is similar to a Grignard reaction. Zinc dust is reacted in situ with the bromoalkyne, which forms the organometallic reagent, which acts as a nucleophile towards ketone. As we saw in the previous Grignard reaction, this adds to the less directly hindered equatorial position to produce the target compound in a 20 to 1 DR. The next reaction was a pain rearrangement. This was promoted by sodium HMDS, which deprotonated the alcohol adjacent to the epoxide group. This acted as a nucleophile and attacked this epoxide to form a new epoxide and an alcohol. This reaction occurs as it produces an equatorial epoxide, which is more thermodynamically stable than the starting material. It was important at this stage of the synthesis to trap the molecule in the bolt conformation. This was done using an oxidation ketalization strategy. First, the secondary hydroxyl group produced by the pain rearrangement was oxidized using desmartin periodinane. This reaction is similar to the IBX oxidation we saw earlier and involves a reaction of the alcohol with the hypervalent iodine group and the abstraction of the geminal proton to produce a ketone. With this ketone now installed, it was possible for an intramolecular reaction to occur between the tertiary alcohol and the ketone to reversibly form an oxyanion, which was trapped using acetic anhydride to form an acetate ketal and lock the molecule into a bolt conformation. With this conformation now locked, the authors carried out an isomerization reaction using Tez triflate and lutadine. The Tez group binds to the epoxide, while the base deprotonates the adjacent proton to carry out an elimination reaction to form an alkene and a Tez protected hydroxyl group. This produced the alkene as a single isomer, which was confirmed by X ray crystallography. With the alkene now installed, the authors turned their attention to one of the most vital steps of this synthesis, which was an enine cyclization. The palladium catalyst first binds to the electron rich alkyne of the substrate, which promotes the formation of a carbon carbon bond with the alkene which reacts in an enolate type fashion to attack the alkyne and form a five-membered ring. The benzyl group is lost upon workup to produce an aldehyde. This reaction is quite unusual in that the reaction goes through a five endocyclization as opposed to the more common five exocyclization, which is disfavored by Baldwin's rules, which we covered in a previous video. This is only the second known example of a five endo addition of an enol ether to an internal alkyne and is the first one to be promoted using a palladium 2 catalyst. The next step of the synthesis was a reductive coupling promoted by titanosine dichloride. This was reduced using metallic manganese to produce the tin 3 compound which underwent a radical addition to the aldehyde and promoted a radical carbon-carbon coupling between the carbonyl of the aldehyde group and the carbonyl of the ester group and upon workup produced a 1,2-diol in addition to the carbon-carbon bond. This reaction is somewhat analogous to the more common McMurray coupling which occurs between two ketones. With the four rings of the tetracyclic target now complete, the authors entered the final stages of the synthesis, which was to install the correct functionality around the molecule. Reaction with fluoroboric acid first deprotected the TES group and then hydrolyzed the acetate ester which was previously installed to lock the intermediate into the bolt conformation. With the acetate group removed, the ketal could then revert back to a ketone and hydroxyl group. A hydrogenation reaction then followed, using palladium on carbon and hydrogen gas to hydrogenate the alkene group to produce a saturated five-membered all-carbon ring, which was obtained as a single isomer. Despite the mix of isomers of the starting material at the hydroxyl group alpha to the ketone, we could propose that the selectivity of this reaction is due to two competing processes and their kinetics. The first process is an epimerization of the alpha hydroxy group. Through the ketoenol tautomerism, it is possible that this can interconvert between an orientation on the top and bottom faces of the ring. The second process is the hydrogenation reaction. 
as only a single isomer was obtained from the reaction, we know that this only happens from one face of the alkene. We could hypothesize that this is due to coordination of the palladium catalyst to the alpha hydroxy group when it is orientated towards the bottom face of the ring where it can guide the catalyst towards the bottom face of the alkene. If this hydrogenation reaction is slower than the epimerization, only one epimer will react and therefore will only produce one product for this reaction. The final step of the synthesis was an alpha deoxygenation using samarium 2 iodide. This was selective for the hydroxyl group alpha to the ketone group and did not affect the other hydroxyl groups present in the molecule. This is because the carbonyl group is better at stabilizing the radical, so upon reaction, the radical first forms at the carbonyl center and then reacts to eliminate the hydroxyl group, which is abstracted by the samarium and leaves the radical on the alpha position. Further reduction with another equivalent of samarium iodide in the workup produces the target 11O dibenzoyl tachironin. Overall, the authors managed to produce 26 mg of this highly complex target in only 14 steps from the bicyclic enone reported by Danishevsky. The highlights of this synthesis are the highly unusual palladium 2 catalyzed enine cyclization, the tin mediated reductive carbonyl coupling and the highly stereoselective manipulations. This synthesis presents a new strategy towards constructing these highly complex tetracyclic molecules and will allow scientists to discover the full range of the possible biological activities of these interesting molecules. That's everything from this week's Simplifying Synthesis. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be back again next week where we will look at the total synthesis of ent plagiocheanin B.